In 1775, the Continental Congress created the Chaplain Corps. Under the command of General George Washington, each soldier was required to attend worship service every Sunday. While other armies advanced on their feet, Washington's troops advanced on their knees. It's time for the Chaplain's Report with Caleb Colquitt on tactics. All right, the chaplain's report today comes from the book of Psalms, and it's actually a Psalm of David. So one of the things that I admire about David, and I think it's appropriate considering what we just talked about, that we're going to talk about a person that was a warrior king, somebody that absolutely believed in the idea of you take action and defend other people and and use the power and the talent that God has given to you to defend others. And David despite being a warrior and despite being somebody that could certainly handle himself in a fight, he also very much had an intellectual side and a poetic side. And he wrote a large portion of the Psalms that we have collected today in the book of Psalm. David had a interesting way of being able to paint a picture with words to have a story develop based on the writings that he put into a song. Because, of course, that's what Psalms means. And David's very musical, poetic nature, really, it gives him a outlet, I guess, to describe what is going on with him personally and to communicate powerful spiritual truths about God. And the psalm that we're going to look at today is no different. We're actually going to look at a couple different Bible verses here. So first, we're going to go ahead and look at the 22nd Psalm, and I want you to notice that there is a distinction here. So Psalm 22, 1, David writes, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Far from deliverance are the words of my groaning. O my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer, and by night, but I have no rest. So in this particular Psalm, you can tell based on this that David is going through an awful lot right now. I mean, those words that he starts out with, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? These are the same words that Jesus quotes on the cross in Hebrew when the sky is darkened. And so this is a very powerful sentiment that David is in such a position in his life right now when he's writing the psalm that he feels abandoned by God. That is a low point to be in your life, to where you feel like even God doesn't care what happens to you, where you feel as though everything is working against you and everything's going so wrong with what you're doing that it's almost as though God doesn't care about you anymore. And David, especially someone as spiritual and devoted to God as he is, that's a painful feeling to have. And there had to be a lot going on with him for him to get to that point. And yet what we see here is that even though God's or even though David's life is not going well, he goes on to talk about everything that he's having to deal with and then changes his tone. Because if you're looking at this particular psalm, you can go through and I think it's it's about the uh, the first 18 verses. All you see is wrath and despair, and David is sorrowful and angry, and he's having to deal with so much. And he's basically just, in, a, in song form, pouring out his heart to God about how upset he is and how really uh, sorrowful he has become over the circumstances of his life. And yet we see a really interesting change in his tone a little bit later in that same psalm, in Psalm 22, verses 19 through 21. So he says, But you, uh, but you, O Lord, be not far off. O you, my help, hasten to my assistance. Deliver my soul from the sword, my only life from the power of the dog. Save me from the lion's mouth, from the horns of the wild oxen. You answer me. You see, there's something really powerful that we see in this because there are some songs that keep more or less the same tone throughout the entirety of the psalm. But that's not what happens here. 
there's a change that is going on in David's attitude that we can see reflected in this psalm. Because the first half, uh, even more than half actually, of the psalm, David is laying out how people have betrayed him and how he just feels so abandoned in his life. And yet, what do we see in verses 19 through 21 and really for the entirety of the rest of the chapter? It's David saying, I feel abandoned, but you haven't abandoned me. He knows God is still there. He understands that God was there the entire time. In fact, he starts off that verse by saying, Lord, be not far off. Because he knows that when he calls, God is going to be there to answer him. I mean, yeah, he feels distraught and he feels abandoned, but he knows that it's just feelings. He knows that God is really still there, that he hasn't abandoned him, that if he cries out that God is going to answer his call because he has faith in God and who he is. And you'll notice that the entire rest of that psalm is David giving praise to God for his goodness, for his mercy, for everything that God has done in his life. And so it is amazing to see this transition that you're thinking, wow, somebody is distraught as David is in this psalm. And you're reading through it, you're like, man, this is depressing. And then you see this amazing transition. And where does this transition come from where there is even, even in this really dark time for David, joy and comfort? It's when he calls out to God. That's what changes It's not that God shows up because he had actually abandoned David. It's not as though God didn't care about David in the interim of that time. The only thing that changed is that David cried out to God. He said, Lord, bring help this way. I need it. Now, does that mean that the circumstances that David was dealing with were just magically solved? No. We get no indication of that from the Psalms whatsoever. But what we do get an indication from in this psalm is that God's help arrived, not necessarily to solve the problem, but to be there and comfort David, to give him the strength that he needed to complete the trial that he was going through. And see, that really is the difference, is that David felt abandoned, but his good sense told him, I'm not really abandoned. God's still here with me. He knew that and understood that. And that's really the message of this psalm, is that To have faith, it takes getting down into those really dark, depressing times. And even though we feel like we don't have a reason to believe that God is still there, our faith leads us to believe that He is. That even when it feels like God isn't really with us anymore, we know that He's still there because we trust in Him and we trust in His goodness. You know, there's a great line from one of my favorite movies, Remember the Titans, You may remember that there's one particular game where they're playing a game in the rain and it's raining really hard and the quarterback is talking to his coach and he says, I can't see him. I can't see my receiver. I can't throw to him if I can't see him. And the coach's advice is, you've been running this route all year. You don't have to see him to know where he is. Just throw to him. What's he saying there? He's saying, have faith in your receiver. Have faith that he is going to be there. Have faith in his ability to get open and be in the right spot at the right time. You don't have to see him. Just throw it. Have faith that he's going to be there to catch the ball. And even though that's a a secular example, isn't that what faith is in God? That because we know that God has always been there for us in the past, and we know what the Bible says about him, and we know what he's done in other people's lives— We don't have to see him every single second of every day to know that he's working in our lives. We just know that he's there and we behave in a way that reflects the fact that we know that he's still there and that he's still going to help us and that he still cares about us and still loves us and still wants what's best for us. That's what faith is, an action that shows that we believe in God and who he is and we believe that his nature is constant. And because of that, and because we have experience in this, that even in those dark, depressing times where we can't necessarily see God's presence every second of every day, we still know that he's there, just like David did. That's what it means to have mature faith. 
that we learn through experience that God is always going to be there because he always has been in the past and God doesn't change. Stay the course, friends. Just in case you were wondering, yes, I am a straight white Christian male and a small government constitutionalist, which means I have no chance of getting any help from the government and wouldn't accept their help even if they offered. Which means I'm going to need you to like and subscribe because my gun collection is not going to pay for itself.